everybody gardening season 2024 we are off thought i'd go ahead and show you how i do this um because i haven't really recorded it it's like i always am so far behind even before i got cancer like i would just always forget <laughs> to record when i was doing my garden but over the years i come up with some things that just makes it way easier for instance row spacing or straight rows you can go to rural king or tractor supply or any place like that they've got these step in electric fence posts they don't cost very much i've got a bunch of them so what i do is i use some polypropylene tomato line and i take two of them that's about the distance of the length of my rows and i put a string between two of them now another thing i do is i've got these dowel rods they are measured i've got a 24 inch an 18 inch and a 12 inch so what i do is i use the dowel rod to show me where my next post goes then I use the dowel rod to show me where my next post goes. So what I do is, this is the row I'm getting ready to plant that's got plant that has the string. So I plant the crops at the correct spacing, which on these is 18 inches. I got a dowel rod for that too. I've also got some that are 12 inches. I got some that are six inches. The dowel rods are just simple to put in my pocket and carry around, they don't weigh anything. So I plant my first row of brassicas. Then I simply take and move this post to that spot and that post to that spot and I do the next row. Then I move, you know, once that row is planted, I do that way. Now, since these are already started, these come out of my arrow garden. I take, when I transfer them outside, I just stick them in a bowl and each layer of plant is a different plant and on my cell phone i have what each layer of plant is in this thing it's actually a shopping list app but so from top to bottom i know what each variety of plant i have in here is each each level of plant is separated by a wet paper towel which keeps the roots from drying out so there's multiple layers of plants there each layer is a different plant and they've got these paper towels that are wet to keep the roots from drying out and i just bring them out in a bowl and then i plant them out here i put in my little phone app you know what the spacing is for each plant which most brassicas are two foot rows and 12 to 18 inch, sometimes 24 inches on plant spacing. But I generally try to keep everything to around 18 inch spacing on brassicas. Um, so when I get these done, these three rows done, I just move these over again and do my next three rows. You can see now with me doing two foot spacing, what that does is that allows me that once these plants are actually pretty close to mature, I originally till this garden with my gas tiller, which is what I did. I did it once earlier this year and I just come out here and done it again. This top part up here, I don't really care about. I'm only planting in this shaded area down here right now. So I haven't raked out this top part, but I till the garden with this big gas tiller because it goes really deep and then i use this little sun joe tiller i don't remember i've got a 12 inch one and an 18 inch wide one i've got two of them i like them so much i think that's the 12 inch one and then when weeds start to grow up i can just come out here and run that little 12 inch sun joe tiller in between the rows and then I don't have to weed hardly ever. <laughs> um, it runs, now the Sunjo tillers are electric and it requires electric power. But right there is my basement, an entry door into my basement. Of course, I've got an electrical outlet there. And then I just run a really heavy duty, it's like a 10 gauge extension cord. Great big, thick 
cord not like what you're going to buy in walmart i had to buy it off of amazon 100 foot cord was pretty expensive but anyways so i'm actually forgetting my i don't have my trowel <laughs> but i'm getting ready to plant these plants i figured i'd go ahead and do a video i want to show you how i do it and uh if you have any questions don't forget to hit the uh comments down there and ask any questions you might have now the reason why i plant brassicas here is because they get morning sun so the sun rises over there that's the east and then about midday for the better part of the day this whole area over here is shaded you can see it's starting to get shaded already so they get about six or seven hours of early morning sun when it's cooler outside and then when you get the high noon sun the sun is actually behind this great big huge pine tree except for about a couple of hours as it transfers from this pine tree over to these big tall trees over there so this area over here is half day in the sun this area up here is pretty much direct sun this right here is pretty much direct sun except for this little bit right here and then that down there is kind of like this area up here half the day it's direct sun the other half it's shade so what i do is i split my garden into five sections so there's section one two three four five and that allows me to do crop rotation really easy because what i can do like if i plant corn over here this year next year i'll plant corn over there if i plant tomatoes over here and peppers this year next year i plant them over here but it just happens to be that the way that the sun works even if i got something taller like corn growing over here it doesn't block the sun in this area over here so i can basically rotate my crops generally this area over here i save for like melons this area here I use for brassicas. That area down there, sometimes I'll do brassicas. I usually almost always do potatoes down there. And then I pretty much always do some climbing plant, usually cucumbers. Sometimes I'll do pumpkins or something up this. I've actually got a couple of these. I took most of them down when I had cancer, but I've actually built three or four of these all the way back in like 2015. It's basically just some pressure treated two by fours with some field fence that I had left over from when I run fence around this garden and uh it works really well for climbing plants you can actually see there's some sort of a vine growing up there now a weed but whatever and then back here i've got blueberries figs and right there is one of my asparagus beds i've actually got two of those asparagus beds and a different other part of the property but that's kind of like the way i do my garden so i can plant a whole lot of plants in here um when it was raised beds, they I just didn't care for raised beds. I know a lot of people that use them. I don't care for them. Uh, I, I'm kind of old school in about everything I do. And uh, I'm always picking up rocks. If you saw the collection of rocks I've dug out of this yard. <laughs> One thing about Kentucky, if you live in Kentucky, you have always got plenty of rocks. You can't dig very far without hitting at least one anyways let me go get uh let me go get my trowel and i'll start planting these one thing i forgot to mention i'll leave a link to this like this poly line also you'll see me using some hoop houses and some frost covers now i'm actually about i forgot to mention that that's what i wanted to really tell you today is actually march 25th and normally i would have this done by like march 15th under frost covers and get a head start but we had like you know the frost covers are good down below freezing to a certain degree but we had temperatures down into the low 20s and i didn't want to risk it because you know that would put me behind a few weeks but um Anyways, I'm about 10 days later than normal. So what you're gonna see me doing, you're gonna see me plant the plants. I'm gonna put some uh, hoops up that I'm then gonna cover with the frost cover and uh, just wait until all this 
less than 20 or less than 32 degree weather goes and then i'll pull the uh the row covers off the row covers are thin enough they allow light through but they don't allow the direct sun to beat down on these plants that's the only reason why i should mention that I'm able to go straight from the arrow garden to a garden without hardening these off. Because they're under row covers, they never see direct sunlight, they don't get a whole lot of wind, that sort of thing. There's actually a storm coming in tonight. Later they say could be high winds, but the, the house and the building and the trees mostly blocks the wind down in this part of the garden. I'm not too worried about that. Up there, like where the bees and the van and stuff, so that's a little bit different story. But down here, the wind don't generally get too bad. But uh, I always take and anchor those really well, too. I got some great big landscaping blocks I anchor the edges of them with. So you'll see that done. Let's get started. And one other thing I forgot. <laughs> This bucket has been outside. Now, I got cancer in 2020. I've had this since 2019. I usually kept it in the building up there. And when I got cancer, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to still be alive. This has been sitting outside in the sun since 2020. And this is one of the coolest things ever. You take basically any five-gallon bucket, and you can put this tool belt on it where you can then, look at all the leaves in there where it's been sitting outside. You can then put all your garden tools that you use inside here. Some of these garden tools are probably looking pretty nasty now, though. But anyways, this is a really cool thing. I'll leave a link to it down in the description also. These are just things that I use and if you watch my videos you know i hardly ever do product reviews i hardly ever promote products unless i actually use them i pay for these out of my own money these are things i use year after year after year now i did buy some new row covers this year but they're the same brand i've actually got a bunch up here in a building i can show you I just they're kind of hard to get to the buildings unorganized where for the last three years I'm constantly out of time and just my whole life's unorganized right now so actually in all honesty these are cheap enough it was quicker for me to buy new ones than what it would be for me to go into that building and try to clean that building out and drag the ones out that I've already got and plus I've had them in other videos um, I use these frost covers a lot of times if we get a late frost um, I've got 70 fruit trees I have to think about so I I always have plenty of frost covers But this is the same stuff. I buy year after year after year um, And same stuff I use that's why I don't mind Promoting it because these companies aren't paying me to promote it I'm not selling you anything even though it is an affiliate link and I will get a little bit of a kickback from it I don't sell a whole lot of stuff through my affiliate links. I'll be honest with you my YouTube channel I've got over 700 videos. I have a low subscriber count and the reason being is because I'm not pushing products I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you how I live my life. So if I use something, I can guarantee you it works well. If it didn't, I'd tell you about it. Let's get this done.
So once I have that done, if you notice I kept the wet paper towels, that's because I reuse them. I got more plants to go from the air garden out to here. Now, my garden is not like square. Like it's kind of rectangular, but like the corners aren't square. So what happens is you'll see that like the way I run my rows, I try to keep them relatively even, but as you get farther down, it starts to look wonky. Like this looks like it's not straight, but it is. It's like the same distance from that row to that row, that row to that row, and the same from there to there and there to there. But when you step over here, it's because your body naturally wants to rotate and actually be square. So like this row that is straight if I was looking at and I rotate my body, it actually shows like that it's probably more like a down the center of those blueberry plants down here. That's why row spacing using the way that I do. So instead of being at that last post right there, it would show it as being here. Like, look, that looks straight ahead. But no, it's not. <laughs> it's kind of crazy how it does. That's the importance of doing the row spacing the way I do it. Um, my garden is not actually square or even a rectangle. It's kind of like a weird shape. It's like a trapezoid. So, uh, and that's just because when I laid it out, I, I bought it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. When I did this garden in 2016, I think it was, I just, I bought it. My eyeballs apparently aren't very good. Anyways, so I'll go ahead and do the uh, hoops and the row covers. There's what? One, two, three rows right now. One, two, three rows. Yep. I'll go ahead and get that set up. You can see what it looks like. So I bought a bunch of these like row cut hoop. They're like hoops. They're just metal hoops covered in plastic. Um, I don't remember how many of these I got. I think I bought a box that had like 50 of them in it. Um, and they do okay, but I do them a little bit different than most people. So I don't cover each row all the way down there. What I do is I put like three here and then I measure over. I need about 10 feet. So really I got enough to even do that one if I wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three down that first row, three down this row, and then I'm gonna put my 10 foot wide row cover that's 33 feet long over this. And that way I'm like doing both, all of this with basically enough hoops for one row. And it works out pretty good. This could just kind of the way I've always done it. I go in kind of close to the end and put one You'll see here in a minute. Then I go about halfway down and do another one. Then to the end. Then I come all the way over to this side and do the next one. So that way I'm covering three rows with one frost cloth. Now, hopefully it makes sense. So what I'll do is I'll get a couple more blocks away the center down and the ends. 
but that's the way I do it. The hoops are really just to kind of like get it up off the ground so it's not touching, the fabric's not touching the plants. Now I'll put another heavy block about midway down on this side and about midway down on that side. I just didn't want to do it on camera and waste your time. These are 33 feet long, which is way longer than my rows. I just bunch it up. Then I'll put another rock here to hold it down. So that's basically the way I do it, and it works great. These uh, landscaping blocks, they probably weigh, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds each. So that, that cloth isn't going anywhere. Not only that, it allows the rain through, and it holds in moisture on the inside. So that's exactly what these cool weather plants need right now. Anyways... Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Again, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but I'll leave links down in the comments for these things.